Hi everyone, welcome back to this video series on getting started with Ableton Live Lite. So in the last video, I showed you how to add a bass line to the beat. Now we're gonna add some more musical elements and continue building up the layers of the track. In this video, I'll be adding some chords using two different sounds, making use of Live's fantastic MIDI effects, and also recording in a melodic part from a hardware synth. Things are getting serious, let's get into it. So because we want to add some more parts, we need to create some more MIDI tracks. And you can see we've already used up two of our MIDI tracks already. So what we can do is just create some more. So we just go up to here, create and insert MIDI track. And we can also do that with Shift Command T as well. So there we go, we've got two new MIDI tracks. So I want to look for a piano sound now. So first I'm going to click on the arm recording button on this channel here, and we're gonna use the search function it's a really, really useful feature of the browser. So if we're in the sounds category and we click on here and then type in piano, you can see that any presets that have piano in the title will come up here. So let's go to piano and keys and let's try this grand piano sound. Double click on it to load it into the track. There we go. Now the bass line I played went like this. Okay, so the key signature of this track is A minor, and it's just all the white notes. Very, very simple. Now I want to play some chords, and a chord is defined as when you play more than one note at the same time. And one of the simplest chords is a triad, and this is often called a stack of thirds, where we have the first note, the root note, we go up a third, and then a fifth. So this is A minor. Now what's brilliant about Live is there's actually a MIDI device that can do that for us without having to play the notes. So it's really good if you're not that familiar with playing the keyboard. Let's go over to the MIDI effects category here and go onto chord. And I'm just gonna click on this triangle here to bring up some of the presets. And the one that I'm gonna choose is this one, it's called House For The Go. And all I have to do is just double click on it and it will load it up for me just before the piano device. So if I now play the keyboard. It's playing those chords for me, fantastic. And you also might be able to hear that, that the volume of the chords is changing and that's because the keyboard I'm playing is velocity sensitive. So if I play very softly, it's quiet, and if I play very hard, it's much louder. Kind of what you'd expect from a real piano. But for this style of music, I'd rather that it was more of a constant volume. So again, there's another MIDI effect we can use for that, and it's called Velocity. I'm just gonna scroll down, and we're gonna select this one, Fix 127. So let's double click on it. So whatever velocity I play on the keyboard, it's always gonna be the same volume. Now I can hear that's already a bit loud, so I'm just gonna take the volume down. So let's try jamming something onto this third scene here. Okay, um, we can use capture again. I quite like that first riff that I played. It's captured it all, but it's just looped that last bar. So let's just drag the loop brace back here and see what that sounds like. Okay, so let's quantize it. Again, going up here, quantize. Uh, we could just do Command U. And let's not forget to apply that groove as well. Okay, great, so that's really working for that kind of more funky section there. Now I'd quite like to find some chords that are maybe a bit more mellow, and for that often pad sounds are really good. So this time I'm gonna go up to the first scene, and let's go over to this MIDI track, and let's look for a pad sound. So I'm gonna go over to the sounds again, um, and there's actually a sound category for that called pad. So let's just listen to some of those. Oh, that's really nice. And that sounds like it's actually got a chord kind of built into it, maybe a chord device, which is really good. So let's drag that over and 
again, I'm going to bring the volume level a little bit down. So what we have here on the left hand side of this device are things called macro variations. And you can see these are actually preset chords. That's a major, minor, major seventh, minor seventh, or even no chord at all. So this is one of my favorite chords. It's a minor nine. So let's just try playing that with the first scene here. Okay, so as you can see, that's quite tricky to play, but I've actually created my own chord device preset, and I want to quickly show you how I created it. So I'm just gonna to go to the user library here, and if we just go to the presets and MIDI effect rack, you'll see it's here, skis minor nine. So let's just go over here, and I'm just gonna double click on that. Now you have to make sure that no chord is selected on the pad device, but now if I play this, So let's have a quick look at my effects rack. I've set the chord device here. So these are the settings for the semitones. I'm also pitching it down two semitones so I can just play the appropriate key. And I've also added a velocity device here, not fixed at 127 like the other velocity preset, but it's got a lower limit of 86. And I'm just gonna adjust the filter cutoff on this pad to make it sound a little bit more mellow. And let's just try recording something in. I'm going to record it in manually this time. So we've still got our counting as one bar. There we go. You can see it's recorded it in nicely. Let's quantize it. And one great feature I wanted to show is the fold function, as this will focus the clip by only showing the notes you've recorded or programmed in. So let's supply the groove again to that. And let's duplicate that down to the second scene. Just playing through the scenes. Okay, so now we've got the chord parts in, I want to record a melody. And for this, I want to use one of my hardware synths, my Korg Minilog. So up until now, we've just been using MIDI tracks. Now we're gonna use an audio track. So I'm gonna click on this track here, click on Arm Recording. And what we need to do is to select where we want the audio to come from. So if we go back to the preferences here, this is where you can set which inputs are active, depending on which sound card you're using. So click on input configuration, and I'm gonna be using these inputs here. Okay. So now I can select input 14, which is where my mini log is coming in. And let's just play something now. And you can see we have an input. So let's record this on the first scene here. And we'll just record it into this clip and then we can kind of jam something down and then edit it afterwards. Okay, I quite like that part. So let's just put auto on now and let's just solo it so we can listen back to it. Now, another great thing about Ableton Live is the fact that you can quantize audio in the same way that you can quantize MIDI. And you can see in this clip, there are these little kind of white marks, and these are called pseudo warp markers. And what it's done is identified the transients, which mean the peaks in the audio signal, and it's added a marker there. Now, what we can do is we select all, so do Command A, and then Command U to quantize. It's then quantized it all to the setting we had, which was 16ths. 
And even better than that, we can now apply the groove. And let's play it. Now this is called warping. And with warping, there are some different settings according to the type of audio that you're trying to warp. Now the default setting I've got here is beats. But this isn't a beat, this is a melodic part. So I would suggest selecting the complex mode just to get a better quality. So let's just play it now. Great, really happy with that. I'm just gonna duplicate that part down there. Okay, great. So the track is really taking shape now. We actually have two distinct sections. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use a device in live called Simpler to play a vocal sample. 